from 1981 that is dealing with our current state of affairs. I believe it's very important that you hear this. Now, if you would, I want to I want to just say, please repost this, share this. I know the Lord is going to speak to you and many people through this broadcast today. And I also want to say a massive thank you to those of you who are a part of our partner family. Partners, you're just such a blessing. Thank you for being with us. And if you want to join the family, the partner family, please go to josephz.com, become a partner today, comment, partnering today, so we can welcome you and other people can celebrate you. And then we'll be calling you. We'll be reaching out to you and thanking you for your partnership and just praying for you and blessing you. So you'll hear from us if you partner, and I'm really grateful for that. Also, let me say, I got this new book. I just wrote it, Demystifying the Prophetic. Get this at josephz.com today. I encourage you to do it. And if you do get one or you already have one, would you please give us a good review on Amazon and also a great write-up on goodreads.com. It just helps get more people uh, exposed to the book. So thank you so much. Jesus is Lord. It's going to be great, but I got a lot to get into. It's going to be very beneficial to you today. And I'd like you, if you would, please to, to go over to the screen with me. I'm going to show you in a moment. A man named Charles Caps in 1981 shared a prophetic word. It's not very long, but I believe it has to do with our current situation in the political arena. Let's take a look at this. Let's go over to the screen. Let's watch this together. There are going to be men that are going to be framed and conspiracies against them to remove them from high positions wow. and to keep some from getting in high positions. There will be great pains and great effort given to put them down and expose them and reveal things that are lies against them to deliver them from high government positions. But in the end, it shall be that there will be a turning around of what the enemy has wrought and bring forth the manifestation and those that have done it will be exposed and expelled and those that have been conspired against shall rise to higher government position for this nation shall walk in the ways of the Lord for my people have interceded and called upon me and believed me for supernatural things and now you're going to see it said the Lord Man. Glory to God. that sounds familiar doesn't it Heather what'd you think of that I thought that was amazing did I, you yeah I, it's kind of like the Lord knows what he's doing <laughs> it's kind of like the for Lord those knows. who have ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying and for those in places of responsibility like this gentleman uh, that was releasing the word the way that he did. Yeah, Charles Caps. Yes. You know, the thing about Charles is I know his daughter. Yeah, And uh, I was able to write an endorsement in her book, mm -hmm. Annette Caps. She's got yes. a great ministry, and, mm -hmm. and she runs his, his ministry still. Mm -hmm. And I'm just blessed to know Annette, and we've talked with her a few times. Yeah, and, absolutely. But this is a powerful word. Mm -hmm. it is and so here's what I'd like to do. It's encouraging. Yeah. You know who sent this to me oh. is uh, Kyle. Oh, yeah. Kyle Lafmacher. He's, he's just the best. He's, yes, he is he's, the best. Um, he works with me in publishing, and it's just so, it's such a blessing that he sent this to me. Mm -hmm. And I know a few other guys have it, and they've been putting it out around, but I feel like now's the time to look at this one more time. Yes. I believe it gives hope and releases a burst of faith. Mm -hmm. um, if we look here at the screen, you, know, you could just see this is Charles, mm -hmm. and uh, this was released... What, this was released in 1981. How many years ago was that, Elijah? That was 43 years ago. 43 years ago. Wow. This is 43 years ago that he prophesied this, and I believe he's speaking directly into our modern circumstance, what we're dealing with right now uh, in the culture. So there he is, Charles. Yes. So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to air it one more time, but here's how we're going to do it. Can we, Elijah, can we put it up on the screen for everybody, right on the, for the viewers? Everybody? So you won't see me. I just want to see, have you see it, and then you can see the... Uh, the text and stuff as he's saying it, it reads it along with what he's saying. So let's put it up and let's watch this together one more time. I want you to really hear what he said and I'm going to give it to you just full out so I'm not in the, in the shot at all. Let's watch this together one more time. There are going to be men that are going to be framed and conspiracies against them to remove them from high positions and to keep some from getting in high positions. There will be great 
pains and great effort given to put them down, expose them, and reveal things that are lies against them to deliver them from high government positions. But in the end, it shall be that there will be a turning around of what the enemy has wrought and bring forth the manifestation and those that have done it will be exposed and expelled and those that have been conspired against shall rise to higher government position for this nation shall walk in the ways of the Lord for my people have interceded and called upon me and believed me for supernatural things and now you're going to see it saith the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It sounds like a turnaround. Yeah. It sounds like that attack is going to turn to a comeback. Yeah. There's a lot of prophetic words lining up with this, and I believe that we're going to save America just in the nick of time. Absolutely. I believe that. What do you think, yeah. Heather? I think, I think things like this, we talk about this a lot, but I, I wholeheartedly believe that the Lord brings things like this so that we can pray, so that we can use the power of our words, so we can speak to a thing, we can speak into a situation, we can take things that he is by the spirit of the, the Lord, by the spirit of the word that's coming out of his mouth as he is prophesying things, that we can take these things and attach with them by faith and begin to move things in prayer. And then not only move things in prayer, but also be proactive. I mean, a lot of people are fed up. So people are getting yep. very active in their communities and what's available and reaching out. I know for ourselves, we have a wonderful pastor here in town, Pastor Mark Cowart, who is very much involved with how to go about doing these things, or it's a wonderful resource of what you can do to get involved. My point of saying all that is, is not only is it with prayer, not only is it in the supernatural, but there are things you can do in the natural as well to come together and to move things for the kingdom, for the people, um, you know, for for what's needing to happen, and really, and I know there's a word that you talk about in your book about census plenier, yep. where there's an unfolding in right. some of these words, right? And so I just I'm thinking of all of those things. I'm right. thinking of this word being released 43 years ago, and there, what there's said. a lot happening there's in this lot. picture. So you know, we we get on here and begin to look at these narratives and yeah. things that are taking place through the lens of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And you know that it, the sons of Issachar, that's what they did. Yeah. They knew the signs of the times. Mm -hmm. They knew what to do about it. Oh, yeah. And then they knew who they were with. Yeah. That's the sons of Issachar. That's First Chronicles chapter, uh, uh, I think it's, what is it, 32? Uh, yeah. Yeah. First Chronicles, when it gets into that. And um, you recognize something about that, that mm -hmm. um, there is a, a major spirit of accusation. Yeah a major spirit of accusation that's come against the body of Christ yeah. and against uh, leaders as first Chronicles 12, 32, excuse me. That's what I was trying to say um, about the sons of Issachar. But this yeah. accusation against the body of Christ will only go so far. Mm -hmm. And here's the scripture that comes to my mind. I'm reminded of Daniel in the book of Daniel. Now there was this king. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to open up to it here in da Daniel chapter five. <laughs> And good morning, by the way. Yeah, hey, welcome everybody. <laughs> We're coming it. out hot this morning. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Repost it. Yeah, there's, there's just something to be said about yes. this. It's so important. Yeah. Yes, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Hope you have your <laughs> cup of coffee and uh, you're ready to rock. I'm just, yeah. I'm really stirred over this because yes. we're, we're seeing what's happening in, in the news right now. Like yes. we're living out history. Right. Okay, it's wild. Yeah. And this is going to be filled with a bunch of hairpin turns yet. Yeah. I know it. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter five. It's talking about Belshazzar's feast, mm -hmm. okay? And there's a whole big history with this, but he was dishonoring the Lord. He mm -hmm. had the vessels from the temple brought into this feast. They're using the goblets and cups from the temple, and they're just totally dishonoring the house of God. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like Eli and his two reprobate, wicked, scumbag yeah. sons yeah. that were running the temple when Samuel was born, yeah, and he was in that place. And yeah, and, and Hophni and Phinehas, yeah, yeah, and so much of what took place around it. But when you're looking here in Daniel chapter 5, it's a similar type of scenario. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to get a running start at it. We see in Daniel 5, 1, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. Verse 2. 
While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines, might drink from, verse 3, them. Or verse, okay, verse 3. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, wives, concubines drank from them. Verse 4, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold, silver, bronze, and iron, wood, and stone. But look, he got it from God's house. There's something that happens when you violate the fabric of the way God operates. You begin to violate the fabric of things. When you're violating the fabric of, of reality of how God has purposed something and you don't mess with God's things, right? Yeah. Verse 5. In the same hour, now get this. This is this is what to get. This is like a movie, okay? Mm -hmm. Probably like a Dumb and Dumber movie, but it's still great. Just the <laughs> beginning part here. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand of the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. So the king's sitting there, whatever he's doing. They're partying. They're drinking. They're doing mm -hmm. the thing. And all of a sudden, a man's hand appeared from the spirit into the natural, mm. he began to write on the wall. Remember, Jesus wrote in the sand. Yes. It, it's just a lot to this. There's mm -hmm. something that has to do with the judgment mm. when handwriting begins. This is where you get mm. the saying in popular culture today, the writing is on the wall. Yeah. The handwriting's on the wall. That's what it's talking about because a real spiritual hand, the hand of God, a hand of an angel, whatever this is, mm -hmm. maybe it's Jesus pre-incarnate, pops into the natural mm -hmm. and begins to write. Now check yes. this out. He saw part of the hand that wrote. So it must have been the fingers coming through and writing, just like mm -hmm. barely coming through the veil. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Verse six. I mean, this got the king's attention. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him. I bet. So that the joints of his hips were loosened. Mm. And his knees knocks against one another. You know what that means? The yeah. joints of his hips were loosened. <laughs> yes. Anybody? Bless his heart. The joints of his hips were loosened. <laughs> the king soiled himself. Yes. <laughs> That's what had happened. Yes. The king, the king saw a hand appear. And he's drinking out of the goblets. He's looking around. He's looking around. And then he looked at that and he was like, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think he just had a meltdown. What is that? Oh, God. Mm -hmm. He had a meltdown. And he, you know, he just, uh, he began to... I don't know. Yeah. Load his shorts. We'll say it that way. <laughs> and his knees knocked against one another. Verse seven. <laughs> yeah. So can you imagine the embarrassment of this? <laughs> now, the funny part, I got to say something about this. He I'm needed not gonna a be change able, of robe. I'm not going to be able to get to this part. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get to this part that I'm going to say right now. So I'll just give you this little caveat. This is, this is great. Okay. So you know Isaiah 45? Yes. When it says, you Cyrus, whom, whom the Lord is hand is held and he's done all these things. Yeah. You will loose the armor of kings. Mm -hmm. You will loose the loins of kings, one version says. Okay. You will loose the loins of kings. Mm -hmm. It was a prophetic word way in the past, speaking about when Cyrus showed up, the king would soil himself. Yes. And so Daniel presented that to Cyrus. Can you imagine Cyrus reading that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, okay, so Belshazzar, okay. Yeah. <laughs> In other right. words, he was prophesied coming. Yes. And then the scripture said, and the Bible says he would soil himself upon your arriving. And that just happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so the king cried out. I can't get to all that later, so I wanted to share it there. The king cried out. <laughs> allowed to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans. Now, there's the Chaldeans. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Daniel had an influence on these guys later. This is part of the wise men that showed up with Jesus, okay? Yeah. And the soothsayers and all these witches and all that stuff. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, the Chaldeans and wise men, mm -hmm. same difference in many regards. Mm -hmm. Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple, have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. Verse 8. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Verse 9. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed, and his lords were astonished. I mean, his, like, pale. Yeah. He was having a really tough go here. Uh, Belshazzar was. Let's yeah. go to verse 10. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, became to the banquet. Hall, the queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. Verse 11, mm -hmm. there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. 
And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief, verse 12, of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Now, it's worth saying this about Daniel, because that's who he's talking about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Daniel was put in charge of all these people. Mm -hmm. That is why, one more time, the Chaldeans and the wise men knew to find Jesus, because Daniel had given them all kinds of instruction, and they began to study looking for the Messiah. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. He was put over all these guys. Yeah. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Daniel's put in charge of the psychic hotline. Okay, uh, verse 12. <laughs> <clears throat> Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas. Enigmas are impossible knots, difficult things that are nearly impossible to resolve. But Daniel had a gift to unwind them prophetically. We're found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Verse 12. This is great. I'm going let's to, just, let's just get to it here, because this really gets good. Mm -hmm. um, verse Verse 13, then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah whom my father the king brought from Judah? Verse 14, I've heard of you, that the spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now Daniel knew Nebuchadnezzar, this guy's dad. Mm -hmm. So let's go to verse 15. Now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation of the thing. Verse 16. And I've heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and be the third ruler in the kingdom. Verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. Verse 18, this is great. O, Mo, o king, most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty. I like this. O king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. He was saying something in this statement. Verse 19. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all people's nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was despised, disposed, and his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Here's what he's basically saying to him. He's saying, you know, you're a king, but your dad, yeah. now that was a king. Yeah. That's what he was saying to him in this. Mm -hmm. He said he was humbled, lifted up. He's like, you're nothing like your dad. Now that was a man. That was mm -hmm. a king. I like that. So you get into this whole understanding. He goes through all the things that Daniel can do. I've heard of you. You've done this. I'll reward you. I'll do these things. And then we, we get a running start here again. And then he takes him to the point where he says, uh, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and this happened. So let's go all the way to verse 24. Verse 24, then the fingers, now this is uh, Belshazzar relaying the story to Daniel. And mm -hmm. he's saying, there's this inscription written on the wall and we don't know what it says and we need you to interpret it. Nobody could interpret it. Mm -hmm. So it comes here. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him and this writing was written. This is him, Daniel, being told. And this is the inscription that was written. Many, many, verse 25, many, many, Tekel a farson. Many, many tekel a farson. I love this. And here's, here's the funny part of this. I'm gonna, I want to mention this. So these, this hand appears, right? Mm -hmm. It goes to the wall, starts writing, and nobody can interpret it. It's some spirit writing. The mm -hmm. funny part of this is, is they bring Daniel in, and Daniel's probably like, huh, yeah, I can interpret that. <laughs> you know why? Because it's written in Hebrew. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was Hebrew writing. Yeah. He writes it on the wall in Hebrew, and Daniel looked at them. He's like, yeah, I can, uh, I can interpret that for you. And <laughs> it's funny. So they're all like, oh, it's his native language. Yeah. He looks at it. This, this is the interpretation, verse 26. This is the interpretation of each word, and this is why I'm bringing it up now. I want to get a big running start. Mm -hmm. I believe this is going in line with Charles Capp's prophecy yes. and where we're going. This is the interpretation of each word. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, verse 27. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. 28, 
Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. 29, then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. And, and Daniel told him, you're done. You've been mm -hmm. weighed, tested, you're out. Yeah. Verse 30, that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. Wow. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about 62 years old. Now there's so much more I could get into. Eventually this leads to uh, Cyrus mm -hmm. and so many of the things that happen. Now here's why I'm going into this. I'm going into this because I believe in our current system. Mm -hmm. There's something that's going to happen that has not happened in a generation. And likened unto this wicked ruler that had the hand of the Lord appear to him, just like that happened. And right on the wall, saying you've been weighed, mm -hmm. tested, and you are lacking. Yeah. I believe that is happening right now. And my sense is it's gonna be a one, two punch. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just gonna be weighed and tested with one. I think it'll be a double header. Yeah. One, prop up another, and the second will be weighed and tested also, and they will go down. Wow. I sense that coming. And I believe the Lord is saying this clearly in this picture. Now, what do we do? What do we do? Let's look at Psalm 149 really quickly. All right. Psalm 149. Mm -hmm. I like this so much. I want to say something about this. Psalm 149. Let's, let's start out at verse 4. We'll put verse 4 on the screen. I'm going to go to the whiteboard. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. The vision board. The vision board. Hallelujah. There's so much happening. There is. I mean, day by day here, we're watching it all take place and mm -hmm. shake out. We got to keep praying. You're watching the events. Mm -hmm. You got to keep praying. We've been praying ever since that debate. We've been praying all the way up to the shaking that's happening this week. All the announcements. We're standing here and yeah. we're praying now. Mm -hmm. So no matter what this looks like, we got to keep believing. There might even be a silver lining for so many people in the narrative that's going on, but you got to keep praying. Yeah. Okay, because there's something that happens when we pray and there's actually an empowerment that God's giving us that we need to begin to do. And that's this. I want to say something about this. A lot of people, they have a belief system that's based on Okay, they have a belief system that uh, John Wesley called the life of the believer based on these four different things. What is that? This is called a quadrilateral is what he called it, the Wesleyan quadrilateral. And many people believe today that, oh, the Bible says this, everybody believes that they stand on scripture and that's what they're really believing. But most people actually stand on their tradition. Why am I saying this? Because tradition says in the American culture right now mm -hmm. that we need to have a separation. Right? Of these two entities. But that is not what the scripture actually says. Do you know that Romans 13 is used a lot to say you need to obey the laws of the land? And amen to that. If we were to really be getting out of our traditions on when people say separation of church and state, mm -hmm. number one, it was a letter from Thomas Jefferson. It's not in our constitution. Thomas Jefferson wrote this. It's a whole big narrative. And in the separation of church and state meant that the, the government shouldn't have a reach into yes. the church. That's what he was really getting at. Yes. But let's, let's just put that aside for a second. And let's just say we want to really stand by Romans 13. Romans 13. As the church. Mm -hmm. As it relates to... Okay? Let's say we really want to do that. Now, tradition, many people that are just kind of 
ignorant of the laws of the land and all that will say, oh, we got to stay away from saying things. We can't do that. But that is not what the scripture says. Yeah. You do have to stay with the laws of the land, obeying the authorities of the land, all that. But if we're really going to do that and be scriptural, according to Romans 13, then that means we need to really stand That means we need to really stand on these things right here. Yeah. If we're going to do Romans 13, then that means you better really double down and start knowing the Constitution. You better really start knowing what the Bible says and then what the laws of the land really say, yes. not what people tell you they say. Yes. And what that means is in America, in this land, we got some stuff to take care of. That's right. Where other nations, mm -hmm. you got to stand with the laws of that land. Yeah. But not here. In this land, we follow the rules of law. We follow the law. We follow the Constitution. And the Constitution, if we're going to be biblical and scriptural, not traditional over what people say it says, but actually do what it says, that should lead us to a very constitutional mindset. Yeah. So what am I getting at? It's this. Psalm 149, we begin to get into a really powerful understanding. It says here in Psalm 149, let's put the shot on the TV screen for a second. It says in Psalm 149 and verse four, it says, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Heather, what does verse five say? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. Well, that's strong. To do what? Verse 7 says to do what? What are they going to do in verse 7? To execute vengeance on the nation. Whoa. And, to, and punish on the peoples. Punishments on the peoples. Mm -hmm. So here it says, what are the people called to do? To execute vengeance on the nations. Yes. And punishments on the peoples. Mm -hmm. This sounds like governing. Yeah. This sounds like ruling. This sounds like doing what you're supposed to do. But here's the thing. We are mm -hmm. New Testament. Yeah. And, and this whole narrative of separation of church and state mm -hmm. has been greatly misconstrued. And so when we look at this, we got to realize mm -hmm. if we're going to be New Testament believers yeah. and abide by Romans 13 and some of these laws yes. or what the scripture says, that means we need to enforce yes. what the Bible says and then enforce mm -hmm. what the Bible says about the laws of the land, which means the Constitution. Yeah. So now we're down to interpreting the Constitution. I think everybody should have a copy yes. and start knowing what it actually says. Yes. That we are actually, we're America. Yeah, for the people and by the people. We the people. We the people. And this is strong stuff. So, okay, so they do what? They execute vengeance on the nations mm -hmm. and punishments on the peoples. This is believers. Yeah. Believers. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, what does it say there? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetter, fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. There we go. Praise the Lord. So when you know the word of God, you know what you're supposed to do. Now, if the Bible said, mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> defy the laws of the land. Okay. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, Listen to those. They have a sword. They don't bear it in vain. Yeah. You got to listen to it. But if mm -hmm. that sword is violating the laws of the land, yeah. that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. That sword of authority is put there to fulfill a role, an office, and a purpose. Yes. If it's corrupt, it's corrupting the office and the purpose. Mm -hmm. So the person is different than the office. Mm -hmm. As soon as the person quits fulfilling the duties of that office mm -hmm. and they violate the laws of the land themselves, mm -hmm. that is when you begin to enforce the laws of the land, mm -hmm. even on the person in the office. And yeah. so this is something that we've got to really look at. Let me come back over here and look right at you. I believe this prophecy from Charles Caps. And if you didn't see it, and you're just joining us. You need to go back and watch the beginning of the broadcast today. Once we're, you know, beyond this point and you can go back, it'll be up. This will be up on all the platforms. I encourage you to check it out because God is saying something and I'm telling you, there's a turnaround coming. I have that word mm -hmm. we shared. The yeah. attack will turn to a comeback. Yeah. The attack will turn to a comeback. Mm -hmm. And I believe the comeback is in the works. Yeah. And, and even as they prop up the people they're propping up and, and it's going to go down this avenue, I have to tell you the Spirit of the Lord is not shrinking back. Mm -hmm. He is bringing a way for you. There is a breakthrough anointing coming and God is with you in this. Let me say something to you today. You and God are the majority. You're anointed for this time. 
You don't have to shrink back. You don't have to fear what's going on in the culture because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I just have to say, you know, Heather, I have to say, mm -hmm. I believe we're going to see a tremendous comeback. Absolutely. Now, I think it's going to be with difficulty, challenge, sure. and all yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it is kind of, well, not kind of, what you saw with the 45 degree angle. And that the, there's... The drawing we draw, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And with the, there will be some instability, if you will. Yeah. Well, what you talk about. But it will have redemption. But in it, it will have redemption in it, absolutely, yeah. for sure. And uh, we continue to pray. And not just continue to pray only, but continue to pray with action attached to it and find out how to get involved. That's right. And I think, and not I think, we have the opportunity. We're out in airports and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. where we're talking to people that, you know, aren't church community, just just everyday people. Yeah. And, and whether, wherever you stand and what you believe for, um, in your political beliefs Everybody is fed up. Yeah, they're, they are. They're done with it. They really are. And now is the time to stand up and to participate. Now is the time more than ever to push to get involved. Yep. More so than ever. How about if we do this? You and I should pray. Yeah. Speak life over everybody. Y yes. Minister to them. I'm going to yes. ask you to do that in a moment, Heather, because you have such an anointing for emotional healing, mental healing, yeah. physical healing. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord works through you. Yeah. And I, I just want to look right at you real quick. Let me look at you. I'm just going to look right at you guys. So good to see you today. Welcome. Mm -hmm. I want to say this very, very clearly to you. We are looking to advance this platform for the glory of Jesus, and we really do need your help. Uh, we're, we're working diligently on a building project right now. We've got so much more to do. Um, as a matter of fact, can I show the walk through the building real quick here, guys? Now, here it is. We'll just turn to this very quickly. So when you see this, you see the building is under, you know, uh, repair. We're getting it going. It's tremendous. It's going on. We need to pay this down completely. And we're a few hundred thousand away from that. To get this fully taken care of is somewhere around 1.3, 1.2 million at this point. But we want to build a set in here. And right now this space is being used for our shipping department, putting up books and all that. And I'm so grateful uh, that we can do it. But here's what I want to say. Whether we end up outgrowing the space like we're already doing because of staff, we have about 40 staff now, many of them not even in the facility because they have to work off campus. We're looking at taking this space and mm -hmm. advancing it into a studio. And if that doesn't work, we'll keep using our fireplace studio that we're in right now. Or we'll have to keep using that for shipping if needed. And if we just keep outgrowing this and we can't get to developing this as soon as we want, then we're going to just have to get another building yeah. and build nearby, buy another lot of property, mm -hmm. do something. But right now we're working on all this. So we really, the reason I'm showing this to you is we're believing God for people that will stand with us. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. there's people that can do a dramatic donation, something that they can say, well, let's get this taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that'd be awesome. We want to both get it paid off and remodeled. And that's mm -hmm. to the tune of what, 1.2? And we're doing great. Everything's mm -hmm. good. The only hang-up has been some of the uh, red tape with some of the zoning issues and all that. But we're well on our way to having that resolved, and it's going very well. Yeah. But it just takes time. All these things take time. Mm -hmm. And let me look right at you. What I'm, what I'm asking you to consider is if you would help, you know, in a way that God would put on your heart, speak to you. Um, first of all, would you consider partnering towards all this? If you are a partner, we are so grateful. You have no idea how thankful we are for you as a partner. Whether you've been with us a while or if you're brand new, thank you. But if you want to become part of the partner family to help us so we can stand together and go win and take some territory, win sons and daughters, go after this culture that's been twisted up and, and mutilated and, and lied about. And yeah. I just believe we can really make a difference together. And we're looking to ex expand to more platforms. And we keep getting these words and prophetic insights from other people that we know God is calling us to a higher level, a higher mountain, so to speak. And we really do need your help. And I believe that God will, God will speak to many of you to do that. Now, listen, if you can't, we love you. You know that. You're a viewer, you're here, we love you. We're here for you regardless, and we value everyone. And the only reason I bring it up is for those that might be able to do something and help us move this ball, because all that's happening is the more we mo go forward with this, the more we can reach people. That's what it's about. We just want to win the lost, reach people, raise up a million to win a billion, a million 
for a billion. And that's what we're believing God for. And that means disciples, a million disciples through media, plugged in, active, really engaged. And we're able to create clear-eyed, clear-minded warriors that will go in the world and win a billion. That's the dent I want to leave on this culture. Yes. And if God gives us more, God gives us whatever, I'm going to receive it. But that's what I believe. I also believe we're called to build more campuses, things like this, more than just Colorado spread out. This is something I know the Lord's calling us to do. And we need your help. We really do. And I believe that God's speaking to many of you to join this. And we will call you. If you partner, we call you. Yes. Man, do we call yeah, you. We, we love calling you. And we, we speak with you and, and just share the word of the Lord with you. And we never solicit you ever. We just say, hey, here's what we got going on. But when we call you, none of this is talked about. Our team just calls to love you and pray with you. So we just love you so much. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. We got a lot to do. We got a lot to do. Yeah. We do. We're grateful for it. We are grateful for it. Heather, would you please stretch out your hand and just pray? Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. I just, you know, I'm going to go all the way back here for a moment, back to the trajectory of when the Lord spoke to you and said, I don't need you now, but I need you after the 2020 election. Right. And I just, I want, because... We've, we've talked about crisis fatigue. There yes. has been situation after situation after situation from everything from whether it's been COVID to the design of it to, and I'm talking just on the level of relationships. I'm talking about to the level of strife that is put in families and homes, whether you believe to believe one way or to believe another, whether you're for, whether you're for against. And I'm going to pray, but I want to, my whole point of saying this is, is I want to touch the wound. If there's been a wound there, whether it's been all the way back to when they were burning the cities, when they were burning buildings down all over the U.S., from, from that to all the things they have injected that has infected your home or affected your home in some way, whether it's in your family or whether it's in, you know, your church, whether you believe to close doors or don't close doors, all of this has been by design to break us all up. Yep. But here we are today. Here we are. And I'm going to pray over your hearts and your minds here in just a second. But here we are today coming together. We talk about if it's too small, men will fight. But if it's big enough, people will unite. And just like even with 9-11, the tragedy of that, it didn't matter if you were Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic, whatever. It didn't matter. And so I want to come together and I, please come right now with me in agreement. There's yes, power right in agreement. Now. So right now in Jesus name, Hallelujah. not only over this country, this nation, but the nations around the world, but even into your homes, Jesus, I just speak restoration. I speak healing. I speak this turnaround word that there's a turnaround, a turnaround coming. Yes. It's not just coming, but it's here. The turnaround is here. It's, it's for your home. It's for your life. It's for your family. It's for this nation. And it's for the nations around the world. And I speak a protection. I just release salvation and all that is in it. Yes. Of that protection, the provision being preserved. Hallelujah. Healing in Jesus' name. Healing and wholeness. Wholeness being you fully restored back to the original state. And I say we expose the lies of all the agenda. And I say we come together as brothers and sisters yes. in the Lord. Jesus being the chief cornerstone, the pillar that we rely on and we count on that is unchanging. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever you have going on, whatever you have going on, whether it's on a personal level, whether it's on a level in your home, whether it's in your community, whether it's in your church, I bind strife in Jesus' name. And I say unity in Jesus' name. And the love of God being shed abroad upon your heart till you're moved by compassion to continue to move forward, to see this being part of that change, being part of that, of the solution, being part of what we talked about with Daniel with the yes. enigmas, where you solve it and you be part of the solution you, Jesus. for the turnaround. I speak the turnaround right now in your life. Yes. I say turn around, whatever you have going on. It might look gloom. It might not look positive, but I say it's turning around by faith. Yes. By faith, I say turn around. Turn around. By faith, turn around. Turn around. Turn around in your 
situation. Turn around in your body. Turn around in your relationships. Turn around in your finances. Turn around in your job, your community, or whatever part that the Lord is placing in your hands right now in Jesus' name. And I say it is a turnaround situation for you right now. And I release peace. I release the peace of God. Peace is powerful. There is power in peace. Jesus said to the storm, peace, be still. He said, peace, be still. And I'm in, coming, we are coming into an agreement with you right now for that peace. Jesus' peace on your behalf. I release peace over your mind. I release peace over your thoughts. Yes. That you reign those in, in Jesus' name. Peace over your mind and your heart. Peace over your emotions. I release peace even into the, on a cellular level, into your physical Thank body. You, Jesus. That you know what to do because you have Jesus and he is working on your behalf. You have the Holy Spirit, that comforter that is coming to comfort you right now in everything that you would have need of. Man. I just release the peace of God over your heart, but I release peace peace into your physical body. And I say right now, your body is responding to the blood of Jesus. I come against anxiety. I come against fear. It's a design by the enemy and it does not belong to you. If you are blood bought, anxiety is not a part of your body in Jesus name, but peace is, and you can lay your own hands on yourself and by the power of God breathed on the inside of you, you begin to release peace over your body right now. Release peace, just say it out loud right now, right where you're at. If you're just listening, if you're listening in your car, if you're listening in your home, wherever you may be, you just, you have the power in your mouth to release peace over your circumstances right now. That's right. In Jesus' that mighty, is right. mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Man, that's powerful. Yeah, thank you, I feel you, strength. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that strength? I'm looking right at you. I'm looking right at you today. Yes. I, I just believe that you're being strengthened, that the, the power of God is helping you. Mm -hmm. So we bless you today. Yes, he's Speak working life on your over behalf. you. Listen, uh, you know this. Mm -hmm. Even on a bad day, yes. you're anointed to be the best there is. Yes. God has called you. He's marked you. He's assigned you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fear what's coming next. You don't. You'd be mm -hmm. like Proverbs or rather, yeah, Proverbs 31, yeah. looking to the future and laughing. Yes. Yeah. You can laugh at what's coming mm -hmm. because you know your life, your family, your children, mm -hmm. your people are covered in scarlet. Yeah. We're going red. That's right. Somebody needs to shout out going red. We haven't going shouted red. going red in yeah. a while. Going red. We're going red Absolutely. in the blood of the Lamb. Going, going red, red today. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it means the blood of Jesus. That's We're right. the Revelation 12, 11 tribe. Yeah. We overcame the evil one by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and love not our lives, even unto the demise. And you also recognize we're the Isaiah 10, 27 tribe, which really says that they uh, had the anointing, which destroyed the yoke, and it lifted off their shoulder, their neck, and ultimately it was destroyed yes. because of the anointing oil. That's yes. you. You're outgrowing the yoke. You're lasting. Yes. You're outlasting yes. this problem. You're outlasting the crisis. Mm -hmm. The devil didn't count on that. Didn't encounter you, you still being here. That's right. You know, this ministry, mm -hmm. we're anointed not to push back darkness. That's right. We're here to punish darkness, <laughs> according to Psalm 149. That's right. Yes, we are. Bind their kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron to execute judgment and punishment mm -hmm. on evil. That's right. Spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. Jesus loves you, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. God's not mad at you. He loves you. He does. And so do we. Mm -hmm. If no one's told you today, we love you. And I just have to say, we're going to be here for you all throughout the week. And we're going to be here through it all. I bless you. And please, don't go anywhere. If you would, watch this part. I wanted to say a very special thank you to our partners. Partners, Thank you. Whether you've been a partner with us since the very beginning, the early days, or whether you've recently become a part of our partner family, I want to just simply thank you. Because of you, we're able to do so many things that we could never have accomplished without you working with us together. We're so grateful for you. And from the very bottom of our hearts, we wanted to say thank you to you. 
and we pray for you every day and we stand with you and we're believing God is going to do magnificent things through this partner family in the coming days. As a matter of fact, I have a promise from the Holy Spirit about it. Now, if you want to become part of our partner family or you're even on the fence about it, thinking about it, I would encourage you to do so today by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. Your partnership helps us advance the gospel and it helps us fulfill the commission God's given us to raise up a million to reach a billion. That's lives. A million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go win a billion. A million for a billion. And we know we can do it with your help. I believe with your help, we can impact the world. And we're looking forward to stepping into this at a greater capacity than ever before. I just want to say thank you and invite you to the family by going to josephz.com today. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you into a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is going to really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.